Here we have a Dell Alienware laptop that came in for no power. The customer brought this in on Saturday and she wants it done expedited. She said that she uses the laptop for work and she took the laptop to another shop and the other shop are the ones who refer the customer here to our shop. They said it's a motherboard issue and they do not do any motherboard work. But the thing is they took the laptop apart. The only thing that was still inside the laptop was the motherboard, but the motherboard was not connected to anything. The screws are all taken out, cables out, and the shop also lost the back cover of the laptop, not the bottom cover, the back one. So the laptop came in a very bad condition. If I was a shop and I took a laptop apart for a customer or Big Boss took a laptop apart for a customer, we would put everything back and give it to the customer. We would not leave everything disassembled and outside the laptop. But what can you do? We do not know what type of Hiroshima we're going to find on this board, but let's take a look and see what's going on and why the laptop is not powering on. Now, the first thing I want to do is check the DC in area of the motherboard. And this one has a DC cable that goes in. You do not plug the charging cable straight to the motherboard, but you connect a cable to the connector right here, and then you connect the charging adapter to that cable. So next to that connector, we see two MOSFETs, the two DC MOSFETs. And that's the first thing I check on any laptop. I look for those MOSFETs. Sometimes the MOSFETs are not right next to the connector. One of them is on the front and the other one is on the back, or sometimes they are shifted and they are somewhere else on the board. But if we look, we should be able to find them. Now I'm interested in testing those MOSFETs for a short. A short on those MOSFETs, just like the previous video I did on an Asus laptop, I uploaded that video yesterday. I mentioned a short on this MOSFET, on the drain of the MOSFET, can indicate a problem with either the CPU or the vCore circuit, based on my experience working on laptops. If we measure here, actually we need to measure the MOSFET that's closer to the current sense resistor. So let's measure the drain on this MOSFET. I need to turn my multimeter on. And look at that, we have a short. We have a short circuit. Two seconds into the repair, we already figured out that we have a short circuit on the board. How awesome is that? Let me connect my ground probe to the screw hole of the motherboard and we're gonna inject voltage at the shorted drain of the MOSFET and then we're gonna monitor the board under a thermal camera and see what gets hot on the board. Heat is an indication of a short circuit. When we are injecting voltage at the short, whatever short is on the board. Let's go over to our thermal camera without wasting any time. Talk less and do more, even though a lot of viewers like more talk and less repairs. I try to balance both. All right, so let's inject voltage and see what happens. And look at this. We already see something getting hot on the board. And what's getting hot? That's the CPU. The CPU. All right. It's not unusual to see the CPU getting hot and heat on the CPU does not mean that the CPU is bad. But it could be. We're not going to rule it out as a bad CPU yet. If we check the CPU area, the CPU is what got hot under the thermal camera and it got hot from over here. But it doesn't matter if it got hot from here or here or here, it doesn't matter. The whole thing is one chip, this whole green thing. So we need to take a look at the vCore circuit and see if we see anything obvious. It could be one of the DR MOSFETs that is causing the CPU to go hot. Let's check under the thermal camera one more time, and this time I do not want to focus on the CPU. CPU will get hot, but I want to focus and see if we are able to see any type of heat spot on any one of the MOSFETs here. The slightest heat spot could be an indication that that component is faulty. See? Actually, that's the... yeah. CPU is here, and we do see something right over here. And what is this? And I'm interested in this right over here. See it? That tiny dot under the CPU. This right here. 
Okay. I got it. That Dell gaming laptop cannot play games with us. So right here. Heat was coming from right over here. Let's go ahead and remove that chip and see if that will get rid of the short. If yes, great. We will replace that chip and hope for the best. And we can remove this thermal pad for the time being. It's sitting over the inductors. Just for the time being. And let's remove this chip. That board is thick. It's a multi-layer board. I do not know how many layers. But the board must absorb all the heat before solder reaches melting temperature. And then we will be able to remove that chip. Out. Let's wait until the board cools down a bit. You do not want to take a measurement when the board is still hot because you may get the wrong reading. I always mention this. Repetition makes perfect and that's why I always mention it. Apply some isopropyl alcohol to cool down the board a bit. And do we see any two pins touching? We do not. But anyway, all those four pins are connected as one, connected as one, connected as one. So on and so forth. Meter in diet mode. And let's go back to our DC connector area where we measured the shorted MOSFET. And if we measure right here, are we going to get a short? Yes or no? And the short is gone. <laughs> we got it. We got it. No wasting time. We got straight to the culprit. We found the problem. And we are reading a voltage drop of 0 0.316. The board is still hot. That number is going to go up slightly when the board cools down. But we found the problem. How nice is that? How awesome is that? The customer drove all the way from Oceanside, San Diego, about maybe two and a half hours away, just to bring this laptop here because the shop told her to bring the laptop here. Sometimes customers are overconfident that we're going to fix their device, and I always tell the customer, I'm realistic with the customer. I tell every customer that comes here, it's a 50-50 chance. Even though it may be more than 50% chance, but I always tell customers, it's a 50-50 chance. And that's what I told her. And I told her that the repair attempt will be $149 if we are not able to fix it, because we're going to spend the time to disassemble that monster laptop, and then to reassemble it, and to work on the motherboard. Two people are working on it. And it's not easy. She agreed. But I hope it's a fix so the customer can get her nice laptop back. And we get paid a lot more than $149 if we fix it. So our hard work does not go for nothing. Let's prep the pads. And I do have a donor board. I think I may have a similar donor board or a slightly different one. We're going to remove that MOSFET or that chip of the donor board and put it here and we're going to get rid of the glare and by the way we should have the microscopes back in stock maybe by today or tomorrow the microscopes are out for delivery so i'm expecting to get them in today this is the new version of the microscope version 2 it's specifically customized for us we are using a bigger sensor now a bigger sensor means better image quality especially under low light and better dynamic range. If you are looking at a board that has a high contrast, very bright areas, very dark areas, you're gonna maintain the details in those bright areas. I'll do a full video on the microscope when they come in and I'll compare it with the one, with the excellent one that we already have.
and I got this board here. Let's compare, is it the same board? That's the donor one right here, and that's the customers, and it looks to me like it's the same board. If we look at the donor board, it looks like I already used <laughs> one, two, three MOSFETs. I already used three MOSFETs from that board. So let's use one more. Let's take this one out. How does a VCOR MOSFET go bad? What causes a DR MOS to go bad? Let me know. Leave it down in the comments. We see it happen a lot on almost every laptop, especially gaming laptops. Let's remove the donor board and focus on the customer's board. And we're going to get rid of the glare. And this one aligns like this. Now the numbering on the chip may be different, but it's the same, same chip. I've worked with them before. Very nice. And should we leave those solder balls as a decoration? I always mention it. It's really getting old. Let me just get rid of them. Decoration, decoration, decoration. Who needs a decoration? Just do your job and stop decorating. What about that bridge right here? We're going to keep it. Bridges are nice. How would you cross from Manhattan to Brooklyn if you do not have Brooklyn Bridge? Since those pins are supposed to be connecting to each other, why bother? It's like washing your hand and hoping that your fingers are not going to get wet. Now we're going to go back to the DC MOSFETs and measure just to make sure that we do not have a short anymore. Meter in diet mode. What if that MOSFET that we removed from the donor board is actually faulty? It's very possible, but what are the chances? Like I said in the previous video. Awesome. 0.333, 0.334. 0 0.335, 0 0.336, and it's going up, of course, because the board is still hot. When the board cools down, it's going to jump up higher. So we're done. I'm going to hand this over to Big Boss. Today is his last day, and he's leaving for one month. And we're going to have to put a note on our site that repairs are going to take between four to eight weeks to get done. And expedited will only be valid if you mail over a motherboard or something where we do not have to take it apart. I do not have time to take stuff apart. That's his job. And I have six million motherboards that we need to fix in the shop here. So I'm going to put that note on our site. And expedited service is only valid on stuff that are already taken apart. Otherwise, they're going to have to wait here until Big Boss is back. That's it. Let me give this to Big Boss to reassemble and test, and I'll be back to finish the video. And just like I said, the customer brought this in with bags filled with screws, cables, and I do not know what. Right now, Big Boss is not reassembling everything, but he just wants to secure the board with a few screws, and he'll try it. He's not going to put all the screws right now. 
and we have one more see that's the cover I told you the shop lost for the customer the one that goes right here that's the screen cable will it work? will it work? we need the charging adapter Big Bus went to grab the charging adapter and I do not see any light So it's on. I do see a light. Awesome. What about the screen? Why is it flashing? Two. How many blinks? Flashed blue. So one blue blink and two red. One blue and two red. What does that mean? Now it went off. Press again. Can you disconnect and reconnect the charging cable? We saw a green light two red blinks check and see if the fans are on the fans are not spinning and the CPU is not hot and nothing is hot RAM sticks are in the hard drive is out but it should turn on even if we do not have the hard drive connected what's going on? I need to look it up one blue and two red what does that mean? okay I'll be back okay I just looked it up two red one blue they suggested that we press and hold the power button for 30 seconds so let's try it Okay, so we notice that the fans are spinning and then back off. And that's a very good indication that we may have a problem with the CPU. The CPU did not make it. Spinning and then turning off. I've seen this problem before many times. The CPU probably got a higher voltage than what it could handle because of the shorted MOSFET. And that's what happened. But I'm going to take another look at the motherboard if I find anything new. I will include it in this video, but otherwise, we're going to deem this laptop a no fix and we're going to call the customer to come and pick up. I'm back just to do a final checkup on the motherboard. I know from experience on Dell Alienware's, when we have such a behavior where the laptop goes on and off, CPU does not heat up, the board does not heat up, it's very likely that it's a CPU issue. And I did mention it's one of the two options either a bad MOSFET that we can replace and fix the problem or it's a CPU problem because what happens is a bad MOSFET can send high voltage to the CPU and burn it very common on video cards and laptops but we're gonna go over the board one more time so I know that I did my best I'm seeing some discoloration on the PCH chip but that may be nothing if PCH is a problem it also deems the laptop in no fix our GPU let's go ahead and replace that MOSFET again the one that we changed and see what happens right now we cannot inject voltage because we do not have a short anymore we already fixed the short I know it's good because if there was something wrong with that MOSFET then it would have measured for a short those MOSFETs they cause a short circuit we're not getting a short anymore 
But still, I want to go over it one more time. I just want to change the chip again. And if the laptop still does not work, then we're going to deem it a no fix. And I'm going to still upload the video anyway, so you can learn something from it. And so you can think twice before buying an Alienware. Or at least by warranty, if you did decide to buy an Alienware. I do have a lot of Dell Alienware videos on the channel. You can look them up. I do not know how many of them were a fix and how many were a no fix. What I would suggest is, if you are a gamer or a video editor, you want to render, you want to do graphic design, and you want a high-powered machine, you need a custom desktop. Do not buy a laptop. Do not buy a laptop. Do not buy a laptop. You buy a laptop for its portability. This laptop is not portable. You need a bodybuilder to hold it and carry it for 15 minutes. But for that lady, it made sense because she does want to move it around between home and work. But I would never buy a laptop so I can use it for gaming or graphic design or whatever the case may be. I build a custom PC. The whole laptop is going to go to waste if this board is not fixed. And if you are able to locate a used working board, you can expect to pay $800, $900, $1,000 for that board. And then after a few months, after one year, you're going to have the same issue again. So what's the use? I would not spend eight, nine hundred dollars on a motherboard, but I would buy another one with warranty or just build a desktop. That's my suggestion to you. Why do people buy those bulky laptops? You see a lot of users, they have the laptop at home and it's plugged in on their desk the whole day, the whole week, the whole month, the whole year. They never move it. Why did you choose to get a laptop? And you see why we charge the customer a repair attempt and this one is higher than usual because of the time that it takes to work on this board, to disassemble, to reassemble not counting the mess that the other shop did where they removed every screw, every cable. This stuff takes time. And we specifically told the customer it's $149 for the repair attempt if it's a no fix because I did not want to take it in if the customer did not agree to the repair attempt. We have a lot of devices that we need to fix and we cannot afford to spend a lot of time on this one if the customer is not paying. And again, we're done. And we're done. I'll be back. Big Boss is done with the reassembly and I told him he can reassemble everything because we're not opening up this laptop again. I'm not working on the motherboard again. So let's see. We do see the light. The red light came on, but it went back off. We're going to have to check the fans. Are the fans spinning? Let me see. No, the fans are not spinning. Okay, same thing. Spinning and stopping. Spinning and stopping. Okay, that's it. The problem is likely the CPU. We're going to end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it, even though it's a no fix. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions, and we'll do something else in the next video.